well, 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 today is a very special day for you, for me and all of us because I have with me an extremely special and anointed woman of God. She's known everywhere. She's known worldwide. She carries a big, big grace. But before I tell you who she is, please remember to subscribe to our channel so that whenever we have new videos, you can get them right to your device, your phones, and you know what is going on on Benestel Inspires. And do not forget to leave us a message. We would love to pray with you. We would love to know that you came at all. So while you're doing that, I'll be right back. Words that come from above Come and into your heart God's own touch to your soul The truth the steer of the faith yeah, yeah. Jesus is here, the power's working here And thank you for subscribing. You guys are awesome. Well, I'm not even going to waste time. I have with me today, Ms. Marthia <laughs> Providence. And I'm going to do it like people, you know, have been making fun of me all along. <laughs> ah, she's here. <laughs> thank you so much for coming. Oh, I'm so delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes. You're so beautiful. Thank you. You carry grace. Thank you. you carry beauty. You radiate God. Amen. You know, and there are so many different pages to the story that you carry to the world. The Bible says we are living epistles. Yes. So when people look at us, they see the Bible, mm -hmm. really. And your pages are shining. Thank you. You know, the the I've been spying on you. <laughs> wow. You're following your pages. Wow. I've been seeing your posters. I'm like, oh, she's busy. Yeah. And it is so inspiring to see what you're doing for the Lord. And I would love to know how it all started. Well, um, it's been a minute. It's been a long, <laughs> long journey. But yes. I'm, a, I'm a Jamaican born. Okay. So I came to Canada in the early 70s. Oh, so okay. The, the story is long. So I'm going to try and, <laughs> and concise it. But um, um, this, is, this isn't what I had in mind. Okay. But um, from, from the Caribbean, you pretty much church was your social life. It yeah. was everything because where mm -hmm. I lived, it was from here to the door. That was the church was there. So oh. I, whether I wanted to go or not, I could hear everything. <laughs> and it's one of those homes where all the ministers would probably stop by and, you mm -hmm. know, all of that stuff. So and because I could sing, I was put in the choir. I wasn't asked. I was told oh. I'm in the choir. OK. And in the Caribbean, we would travel around and do different um, churches and ministry. And they would take me along to represent the church. So okay. I've been doing church all my life. I wasn't saved, but just doing church. Okay. But when I came here, unfortunately, I was in church for many years, but I was not saved because hmm. they wanted the talent. Right. Yeah. They needed a singer. The singer. You could sing. Yeah. They didn't it really. Worked. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I was just put in these different um, church um, groups and all that, mm -hmm. but I wasn't really saved. So hmm. um, it was in, I'm giving you a, a, a broad <laughs> yeah, because I, I know we have time yes. uh, where I decided I left. I ran, I ran away from home when I was about 15 because life was very difficult here. Oh. Because when I grew up, I did not know my mother until oh. I came here. I met my mother when I came here. So, oh, so your mother was already here. Yeah, was already here. And then here. you came. And, and I came. I heard she her. was here. She sent for me at 13 and I met her here. So oh, I didn't, wow. I didn't know her. I didn't grow up with her for about 13 years. So you leave the Caribbean and come into this cold, brisk, oh. you know, <laughs> so I was devastated. You're in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> devastated. When you see I was in Hamilton, you didn't see a lot of black faces. Mm. It was just, um, I was the only black in the class. Um, they made fun of my hair. Ooh. They made fun of everything because I was just a, the black, a black student and everybody was white. Mm. And so it was a really, it was a major shift from a little girl running around in the Caribbean yes. to boom. In this cold, it, the weather was cold, the people mm -hmm. was cold, everything was cold. <laughs> so it has been okay. a journey. It has been a journey. So to the way I minister is coming from a place of struggle. Mm -hmm. So I, I know how to, to sort of, you know, relate on all levels because I understand. I never forget 
where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. That's my training ground. Yes. I believe, I think I've been old ever since I was born because I don't remember being young because of the... the um... Well, if you put it like <laughs> that, I think, I, no, I wouldn't put that you were older. I would put that you were in the classroom yes. from where yes. you were born. Yes. Because, you know, a lot of times um, I feel when God look at the capacity in which he's going to use mm. you, he takes you through a certain path. And when I look at the impact you're having right now, you needed to go through that. Yes. Path. Didn't make sense then. It didn't. But now, yes. It does. I can because see now the songs make mm -hmm. sense and you have a story mm -hmm. to tell. Mm -hmm. And also you can relate yes. to people yes. that are going through that scenario. Mm -hmm. um, Canada is a very diverse country and Toronto is mm -hmm. the most cultural, mm -hmm. multi, multicultural mm -hmm. country, uh, city, sorry, in the world. So I'm sure that someone like you would be, would find it easy to connect with various people and convey the message mm -hmm. because yourself, you went through that. You were in the, the environment where you were the standout chick, yes, you know, yes, yes. the hair is different. Yeah, everything. <laughs> the color of the skin is different. The accent is the different. The way I dressed, because my mother everything. didn't believe in wearing um, pants. Oh, or was, you, oh, you have one oh, of those Oh, Lord moms? Jesus. Let me it make was. you laugh a little bit. My mom was like that too. And my mom would lose her mind if I sent pictures uh -huh. where I wore pants. So my mom had the glorious idea of visiting Canada. It wasn't even winter. It was just getting cold in September. She came to drop my brother. And... She, she asked you for a pair of pants. <laughs> it was hilarious. She came in her African attire. You know, she tied her wrapper right, and stuff. Right. And then she's like, oh, this place. It's cool, it's though. It's cool, though. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. And me being the young kid I was at the time, I was like, mm. good for you. Yeah, you yeah, haven't yeah. seen anything. I wish it would come in December where snow buries you down. We were in Quebec. It was cold. Yes. Mine is 30 yes, is yes. what we knew. Mm -hmm. um, so when you come into that kind of environment, your faith mm -hmm. is a little different, different because you know it comes from inside mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you have reflected that very powerfully um I, I mean if i was sleeping and i saw your poster and someone is having an event and your name is on it i'm like ah, this is gonna be a good one mm -hmm. because we know that it's something deep yes. and genuine when did you get born again in this whole situation? Well, um, after being around in Canada, going from church, I sometimes don't like to share because sometimes it seems like it'd be negative, but it's the reality. Okay. And it helps those that are maybe saying, well, I'm not going back to church. I'm not doing mm -hmm. this because it's a journey of you and Christ. Yes. Because I, um, I made a post the other day that says some, you have to let the, the call determines, mm -hmm. um, what you do because it cannot be determined by others. The yes. call has to motivate you. Yes. It can't be people. Mm -hmm. And so I had a lot of negative experience mm. from churches because um, we don't know how to celebrate and honor right. people. Yes. And and the, the, I believe the role as a pastor is to also see the type of people that he leads, what's mm -hmm. inside of them, and yes. to even help to bring it out. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have that. I was just um, called on because I was gifted. Come and sing for us, one mm -hmm. of God. Come and just, you know, bring us to the place, you know, all of that. And right. whether I'm invited or not, I would just show up at the church and they would just call me. You know, they thought mm. they had the right to just call me. Come and sing for us, one of God. Oh. So it's been a journey. Mm. So I remember one day I left. I was living with a, um, with a church sister at the time. Okay. And she wanted me to get baptized. And I... The day of the bab, I was terrified. I felt like I was going to drown. Oh. And I don't know what it was, but for some reason, the baptism was canceled. And I didn't get baptized. And she had, I was living in her home, renting a room. Okay. And I wasn't saved. I was just doing church. And I remember I went to a, a club one night and I came home. <laughs> you were really doing church. Yes. Because I, and, and she was so angry. It was a Sabbath. And she cussed me out the morning and she put me out. Right? Oh, and her son was even saying, Marvia, my mother is speaking to you that way. You're not answering. I said, forget it. So I just packed my suitcase and I left and I moved to the States. Just went for a visit and didn't come back for <laughs> three years later. Oh, my God. But, but the testimony of my coming into the kingdom is so amazing. Hmm. So um, so I, um, I would like to really share that because I was going from still doing church. Okay. And I remember one day I would go to disco on Friday. I would do the club on Saturday <laughs> and Saturday night I would do, um, the dance hall. Cause 
we don't dance all don't start till three o'clock in the morning. So you had a whole program oh, yes. for your weekend. Oh yes. You were organized. Yes, God really I was, needed to use yeah. you. <laughs> and because I was brought up in church, I never got a chance to really do anything. Hmm. So I said, you know what? Forget this because it's just not working. I just feel like I'm doing church and I would be in church singing and I feel the anointing. I said, no, no, not right now. I've got something oh. to do. What? Yeah. Let Lord rest you for a minute. I gotta go. <laughs> And I would, and I was going to church on Saturdays at that time. Because when I came up, my mother is Adventist, ah, and then I the started Saturday going Sabbath. to, mm -hmm. mm. but I started going to Seventh Day Church of God, which is like this, the Saturday version of the Sunday okay. church. Yeah. So this particular night, I ran out of the church. I mean, just the, the Holy Spirit was. I said, "Not right now. Got things to do," and I ran out <laughs> as I'm heading in upstairs. I'm taking my clothes off because I got to meet my crew. You know, I mean, <laughs> and girlfriend. Oh when I got to the club, a pain hit me right across my... So I thought, you know, as black folks, it says a little gas pain, right? So <laughs> all you need to do is drink some hot tea and let it and out. Let it out. <laughs> I saw, every time I tried the pain, I said, not tonight. And I said, okay, okay, let me just rest this one up because I have the dance to go to about three o'clock. Um, the club finishes about one. And so somebody can give me some nice hot tea. So I can, you know, I'm sorry, the story is so funny. Out. Yeah. <laughs> the pain said, I am not moving. Oh my God. And I said, okay, I'm going home because this, you know, it's just not work. The minute I stepped in the house before my head hit the pillow, the pain was going to say, uh oh, that's, mm hmm. Maybe that was a program. Maybe. Pain. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And no, but that was a sign because I would, I knew I was running. I was, mm. I cannot hide from God. You can't. It's been a mark since I can remember. And I've been very angry about it because I said to God, I said, what do you want from me? All I've had throughout my journey is neglect yes. and problems. What can I give? I mean, so just leave me alone. I remember I left the altar one day and said, I'm fed up. I don't want to do this. Because oh everybody God. was saying, there's a call on your life. There's a call in your life. When somebody says that, it's like they're pronouncing a judgment on oh you. Can we take calls seriously? We do. Where you're from, yeah? Yes. Um, so I'm from Ghana. Mm -hmm. And um, I had very, very, very strong mixed yes. and ties with yes. Nigerians. Mm -hmm. And the cultures are very similar. And you are correct. Yes. Like, it is so serious that even if you were having plans, let's say, for example, you told your parents, um, let's move to Germany for something. Mm -hmm, I want to mm -hmm. go to school. Right. And some pastor comes and goes, thus says the <laughs> Lord, you will win souls exactly. for me in Japan. Z -z 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 you better believe yes, our packing yes, our yes, bags yes. and going to Japan uh -huh. because we took it very mm -hmm, seriously. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I completely can relate yeah. with what you're saying. But I think what's really um it, it, it makes me giggle, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I'm admiring your boldness. Is you saying to the Lord, let me be? Yes, I mean, because there's nothing about this journey. When I heard my mother was in Canada, I was so excited. Because okay. when I was young, they would mock me and, mm. and say your mother threw you away mm. and like a fowl. I don't know if you understand that. Yes. And so that was my growing up. That's what I could. But, so when I heard my mother, I had a mother. And oh, she was I was giddy with joy, yeah. Aww. And and so, but when I came, my mother and I did not get along. Mm. So there was a yeah. lot of resentment on her part from mm. because she and my dad didn't get along. So she resented. I don't know why she resented me so much, but because all I knew was a father. So it it was yeah. it was the entire coming here was not pleasant. Oh, so I didn't understand why would God allow me to leave that and come into this because I've been waiting for my mother. And my mother met me with resentment. She didn't Man. even like me. So it was that, that was how it was. So that's how I ended up leaving home. And that's a whole journey. I need a whole month <laughs> to share <laughs> to this. Yeah. So that's, that's how I ended up in Canada. Okay. And then I ran away because I wasn't, I wasn't at home. So I went to, my father was in the U.S. at the time. And I went there for three weeks and ended up staying because I said, what am I coming back to? Hmm. You know what I mean? So, so that, what happened after the pain? It was a hint because I would be going to the dance and I'm praying for protection. So presumptuous. Lord, cover <laughs> me under the blood. <laughs> I am sure God looked from heaven. He has and a sense of humor. Oh, she's adorable. Yeah, yeah. And laughed at you yeah. all through. Because this I'm going into the funny. enemy's camp and asking him to cover protection. me. Yeah, so. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay now. Yeah. So did you get your protection? <laughs> well, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. True. I'm still here. That is a true point. I'm still so here. So how did you then so you did go to the dance? Of course. I would I did oh. that for a few years. That was my life. Years. Yeah. Mm. Church and dance. But I'm fearing God because I know <laughs> that if he if he uh, cuts me over this moment, you know where you're going. Oh yes. But he's merciful. I thank God for his grace. Amen. But how I got saved. I was at a church again singing in, in all of my doings and a young lady, a pastor's daughter came and said, girl, you can sing, come to my church and, you know, sing for us. I said, why not? So okay. the, the Sunday night I went, I was still dressed in my dance hall outfit because oh I God. dance finishes Sunday morning. You know, so, so from dance to church? To church. I don't know dress because I used both. to, yes, I used to <laughs> sometimes, you know, make my own stuff at one point. Okay. And to make a long story short, I went into, I got set up. God set me up mm. in that because in that church were people, we call them Holy Ghost Bulldogs. They can sniff out, mm. you know, those who, who knows, you know, when you're in there playing church, we got a few people who know that, hey, mm -hmm. something isn't right about you. Right. And this church was filled. That was the church I was saved in. I understand mm. what it is to live holy. Right. Their holiness a lot of times had to do with what you look like, but they were for real. They were, for, mm. they were the real deal. Okay. And I went there and I was singing. They asked me to sing. It was a little church, a little room. It wasn't a big room, but it was, it was Holy Ghost charged. Mm. And I started to sing precious Lord. Ooh. Take my hand. Didn't mean a word of it. I was just singing because I could sing. Hmm. Lead me on. And as I'm singing and I was done, my girlfriend started to get excited in, in the spirit. I'm thinking, just please, just go sit down. <laughs> Not now, okay? Just You're just a little bit too excited. Yeah, there's always that one friend. I know, that one friend <laughs> hopping on one. I said, please, please, you know. So when I was done, I knew I was in trouble. Mm. And I stood there. And everybody's looking at me, where does this little girl come from? Why does she sing like she's not, you know, like she's supposed to be saved? I'm hearing a sound, mm. you know? So the pastor came, he said, young lady, because it's a little church, they don't have any singers, so they're glad to get one, you know, so they're already, <laughs> ready to, to time they in. Grab you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they said, she, he said to me, whispery said, are you saved? Because everybody was looking at me. If I could dig a hole, I would have dug it. Because in my mind, I've got one more dance to go to. Oh, my so God. So, Lord, it's not tonight. Yeah. <laughs> and every time I said I'm ready, Satan planned another bigger event. Oh, yeah? wonderful. And I said, I had one more to go. But so, Lord, not tonight. So, I'm standing there. And he's saying, are you saved? And I said, no. He said, are you ready to give your life to Christ? And I said, no. Because I'm... And he, he bawled out, are you saying no to Jesus? Oh, my God. I'm thinking, I'm finished. And when he <laughs> said that, the entire church was on fire. People started to pray. Ooh, they started wow. to war. Things, and I'm thinking, what's going on? Like this kind of, you know, because they, they knew. They saw what I didn't see. Mm. That, that if you don't get saved now, you may not ever get a chance. Mm. But I didn't see that. I was thinking in my mind, I just want this to be over. So I can go down. So I can go, yeah. <laughs> I didn't say yes. But I didn't see the danger in the realm of the spirit. They were, mm. they were pleading for mercy. Mm. Because when I made that statement, they said a cloud of darkness just came over my head. Oh my God. And the Lord said, if you don't want me, I don't want I'm you. Out. And oh people don't Lord. know that we serve that kind of God. We do. Mm. We do. Yeah. And we talk about his love and his mercy, but he's mm -hmm. also a dreadful God. He is. And that everybody have the same length of rope. It is right? true. It's very important. I stop here to say this, where you worship and who, who is your covering? Because they are, they are the ones, the guards standing on the wall. Yes. Watching over your life. You talked about being, being um, woken up to pray. Yes. And the responsibility of that. Yes. Because maybe when you're sleeping, somebody may be dying. Right. So because these were people that understood that we serve a God that is a, is a merciful God. Yes. And they were begging for my life, but I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. But I still wasn't ready. And, you know, unfortunately, because most times when I went to church, I would feel convicted. And when I left that night, that, that was gone. And you gave your life that night? No, I didn't. You did not? I had one more dance. Hello. Oh, <laughs> yeah. wow. Really? The I, because Lord I felt... didn't know. Okay. I didn't know that what was happening. I was just annoyed that we're taking so long. I just wanted to sit down. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
Okay. Yeah, and they were surrounding me and carrying on. I'm thinking, I just want to go because I've got things to do. But because I, so that, that's what I'm saying. It's important who is your comfort. Yes, it is. Because if they, if I was in the wrong place, that would have been the end of Marvel. It would have been. Yeah. Yes. And so because they begged for mercy, mm -hmm. when I came back and I said, okay, Lord, I'm ready now. I couldn't feel anything. Wow. And I remember I went downstairs. I was at church that day, went downstairs and I said, I started to cry. I said, God, what's going on? I can't feel your presence. Now I'm ready to start to give my life. It was like, I couldn't feel anything. And I said, okay, well, I guess that's it. And I went upstairs and never forget a little old lady came over to me and she just, she just touched me and it's like a, a, a reservoir. Oh, just broke. And I wept like crazy. And that was the day I said, okay, Lord, the, the, he, he turned and said, okay. And so I say to folks, I don't even have a choice to say I'm leaving. Mm. I'm backsliding, whatever, because I wouldn't make it. No. So that was my story. So I, so I understand the importance of covering and the importance of leadership. It's not something you take lightly. It is people's not. people's lives are. Yes. And you know, um, I think what you just highlight, I mean, it was a very funny story. But so anointed yes. and so powerful. Um, but I really want to appeal to people in this episode from this beautiful story you shared. Don't take the covering lightly. Mm -mm. That, I mean, sometimes we do church. You get used to church yes. and then you get bored. Yes. You just get, oh man, that pastor is bugging me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that deacon mm -hmm. is so difficult. Oh my God. There are situations where things are a little, okay, hold on. This is not the way it should be. That's but right. make sure you're in scripture and mm -hmm. address it. That's right. Um, but, you know, for people that feel, oh, I can just live my life. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't need that covering. Mm -mm. Uh, You've got a responsibility as a covering. Sometimes the things you say is not going to be well received. Right. You know, because nobody likes the medicine that... You know, the sickness, the medicine don't taste good. Right. But it's it, it cures the... It the, does. Yeah. And praise God for those people. And yes. And thank God for their lives. Thank God for that because that's what keeps me in Christendom, that, mm. that foundation. But see, holiness. we don't know that story. Some of us just looked at you and thought, uh -huh. this mm -hmm. is a warrior for mm -hmm. God. Wherever mm -hmm. she's going, I'm going, I'm going to listen to that music. I'm going to pray with this lady. We didn't even know that some people somewhere had done the homework uh, for us uh, to be uh, blessed. Yes. You yes. know, well, we're coming to the end of this first episode and oh boy. Oh, oh, okay, guys, <laughs> she's going to come back. I think. <laughs> so in case you do come back, mm -hmm. where can we find you? Uh, I'm on Facebook, okay. Marvia Providence, um, YouTube, okay. Marvia Providence, um, uh, okay. Uh, Instagram, okay, TikTok, yeah. You, I'm easily found because I use my my Your name, Marvia Property, yeah. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So you heard this incredible story. I'm sure you had a good laugh, just, just like I did. Mm -hmm. But deep down in your heart, you know that the Lord is talking to you. Mm -hmm. And this story was shared today to nudge you that you have a responsibility. So if you are watching us today and you haven't given your life to Christ, please stick around mm -hmm. because right after this, we have the prayer of salvation where you can give your life to Christ. But until I come your way again, I am Ben Estelle, your favorite gospel artist. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Ben Estelle Inspires where we stay inspired. I will see you soon and God bless you. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I believe you were blessed, uplifted, and you learned something new. The beauty of our lives is that Jesus Christ is our anchor and the center of it. If you are not born again, I would like to give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus Christ. It is the best decision that you could ever make. And it's simple. Just repeat after me. Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe that he died for my sins. I believe that he rose on the third day and gave me victory. I make him Lord of my life today. I am a child of God. I am a believer. In Jesus name I've prayed. Amen. Welcome to God's family. We are excited to have you as part of our family and you will see that you will never be the same. 
angels are rejoicing and we join them to celebrate you. Welcome home. Were you blessed by today's broadcast and would like to be a part of it? Our sponsorship details are on the screen for your convenience. Feel free to use them as the Lord leads you. We would love to take this message of Penistel Inspires to the rest of the world so they can be blessed as well. This is Ben Estelle, your favorite gospel artist. And until I come your way again, stay inspired. God bless you. I leave for you.
Consecrate. 